Guys, we're gonna look at a $45 knife that I absolutely think you need to pick up. This is the QSP Pangolin. Now you've seen some pictures of it up there before. The company did send this to me, so it's probably the best one you're gonna find, but I gotta say, this thing is amazing and I've never seen a bad QSP knife. So let's turn this around. Let's take a look at this final review of a knife that I absolutely fell in love with. Guys, I have not shot the intro for this yet, but I'm going to have to say, I'm probably going to tell you that this is probably about the best $45 you're ever going to spend. Uh, QSP sent me a whole box of knives. We are getting around to some of them. I think you guys probably just saw the, uh, the platypus. Uh, this is the pangolin. And I gotta say, of all the knives they sent me, I think this is my favorite. Um, this is a $45 budget knife in D2 steel that absolutely just kicks the crap out of much more expensive knives. It's a very tactical style knife. So um, this is the full final review. I'll put a spec sheet up here and we're going to do some quick size comparison. Your first knife for size comparison is going to be another knife that I've absolutely fallen in love with. This is the uh, Spyderco PM2 in S90V that I redyed. You can see this is not a small knife. You're getting a big knife for $45. Uh, your next knife for size comparison is the Benchmade 940. You can see this is not a small knife. And a lot of you guys are going to know this for a size comparison. This is not the mini. This is the full size 940. And then your final knife for size comparison, as always, Chris Reeves bends a large 21. And as you can see, this is a good bit bigger. And the thing is, you've got a big curvature, which makes this knife actually feel much larger. So let's get this out of the way and let's talk about this awesome knife. All right. So let's tear into this. So now, I have to admit that the materials on this knife are of a lower price point. So that's how you're able to get such a good knife for $45. But you're not giving up too much because even though you've got some of the cheaper materials, you're still getting a good steel. D2 steel is still a good steel. G10, and you're still getting running on bearings, even though there's steel bearings and steel detent. So... Uh, I've had a lot of knives that run on steel bearings, and they're great. I don't have an issue with it. I have some $500 knives that run on that. Now, D2 on the blade here, done really, really well. They've done a very good job with the grind on this. It is dead center ground. There are no grind issues. It comes down to just about a Goldilocks zone edge. Uh, it's a little thicker than some of the other knives I own, but it still transitions down nice, and it's in a unique it's in one of those unique squat kind of leaning into the cut kind of angles you can see there from the pivot over. When you're doing a push cut, you've got a very good angle. When you're doing a draw cut, you've got a very good angle. It keeps it aligned with the cut really well, and it, it maximizes uh, what you can do without having to flex your wrist as much. Your, your G10 handles on this, super, super comfortable. You can see they've contoured everything. There's deep cutouts in here for all of that. And you've got these deep finger choils that absolutely make this feel incredible in hand. I've got really large hands, very good fit on this. Jimping is very, very good jimping. There are a lot of knife companies that will do jimping and then soften them to a point that they're just there for show. No, these are aggressive. You've got very good purchase on that. Your hand, your thumb does not slip up over. They did not put any jimping on the flipper tab, which means that when you are down in here and pushed up against that very, it's a very comfortable grip and you don't have a hot spot. You've got really good access to your liner lock and the action on this is really very good. It's thumb, it is flipper tab only. There are no thumb studs. Uh, so you've got really good flipper action. That gives you a very clean look on this blade. The swedge on this gives it a very, I'm going to say it gives it a tactical look, which I would say this is more of a tactical style folding knife. In hand, you can see how this comes down. Your thumb goes there. The palm of your hand goes here. You've got this swell uh, with that curvature and it just gives you a very good platform. It is really nice. I like how that sits in your hand like that. It is a grip that I absolutely love. It is one of the best feeling knives in hand I've had come in in a while because of that. So you've got that right there. You can just see how it drops in. So cutting with this has been less fatiguing than a lot of knives. It's fairly broad, it's fairly thick. So you got a broad blade, broad handle, and it's still nice and thick, but everything's been contoured to the point where it just kind of melts into your hand. It does not feel like it's as big as, it feels big, it, it feels big, but it also is positioned where you don't have 
an issue with it being a big knife. You're looking at, you saw it on the spec sheet, but you're looking at eight and a half inches overall. It doesn't feel that big. Uh, it, it's very easy to manipulate. It, you can do detail close up work and not necessarily feel like you need to get up on it any further. So the lack of a forward finger choil, you're not really out of sorts without it. Uh, and it's an attractive knife. You're not, you're not giving up anything. This is a really nice looking knife. It comes in a couple different colors. Uh, it comes in black and green. The pocket clip on it, nice pocket clip. It's not a deep carry, but it is definitely comfortable in and out of pocket and it does not pose a hot spot at all. It is a well done pocket clip. Uh, and they've done a good bit of weight reduction in here. So you don't have a lot of weight. It's got a nice blade forward weight uh, ratio where you're just at the pivot, like a little bit of balance forward of the pivot. I like that a lot. It's got a, a really good feel. You don't have to like eyeball where the blade is because of the way the weight is distributed. So now with everything, there are going to be some negatives. There, there are a couple negatives on this that I absolutely have to point out. But they're just minor things, and there's only a couple of them. So let's turn this around, look at the negative stuff right after you guys hear from Coffee Brand Coffee, this channel sponsor. Guys, there are few things I'm as picky about as my coffee, and I love to have the freshest possible coffee. So what better company than Coffee Brand Coffee that is providing you on-demand roasted coffee? They don't even roast the beans until you order your coffee. They're providing it on-demand delivered to your door the freshest coffee, coffee possible. And because I'm picky, I've picked companies that absolutely support what I believe in. There is no chance that Coffee Brand Coffee is gonna support causes that I don't believe in because there's no BS, there's no politics, no activism dollars. They take all of my money and put it back into the company and they take your money and they support channels like mine. So please go check out Coffee Brand Coffee. Coupon code crazy sharp, all one word, capital C, capital S saves you 5% at checkout. Support the channel, support what they're doing. It's great. So there's not a lot negative to say about this knife. And one of them, you guys are going to laugh when you hear me say it. So uh, first things first, it is flipper only. Now, I do like flipper knives, but I like to have options. I like to be able to reverse flick. That is my favorite my favorite method. I, I think if they had put some thumb studs on this, you probably could have reverse flicked off of this. But thumb studs are another option. Some people like thumb studs better than flippers. Non-flipper knives have a very clean look. I like the option to have multiple. So I think that thumb studs on this would have been better. Uh, I'd like to see them actually add some method to put a uh, lanyard on here. Now, I know you can wrap a lanyard around this, but there's a lot of companies now that have started doing the the typical, like uh, Chris Reese Sabenza type, where you've got a a post with a hole clear through it. Uh, that absolutely allows you to have a nice clean look without a lanyard hole, but still have the option for a lanyard. I do know that people like lanyards and sometimes I do absolutely agree a lanyard works well on. Uh, and then the last thing, as much as I like this knife, these I could have done without the little speed holes, you know what I'm saying? The little grooves in it. I think it would have looked cooler if they had just left it completely plain. I think it would have been better and it would have added, uh, there is a little bit of weirdness under the pocket clip when you're in and out of pocket. It's not horrible, uh, but there is a little point on this that is a little bit sharper and it does catch the material ever so slightly. I think it would have been a smoother transition. Um, other than that, you know, I'm not a big fan of green on knives. Like I don't like green G10. This does come in a black version, so I can't really complain about that. But there is one last thing uh, and it's the transition. Can you see how it's a little thicker? You're definitely going to get a smile. You can see where the edge comes down. That little bit right there, I think they could have done a little bit better and just taken that point out to about there. Not necessarily making a full finger choil, but opening that up ever so slightly, and you would have less uh, thickening of that edge. You can see where it starts to get thick right there as you transition back. And so over progressive sharpenings, you're going to notice that that point stands up more prominent, uh, and you're not going to get into your... Uh, uh, Ricasso, uh, your plunge anywhere near as bad on your stones. So just some minor little things. It is absolutely for 45 bucks, one of the best values you're going to find on the market. And I, I, I love this knife. It is a great, great knife. So let's turn this around, do some final thoughts and send you out about your day. So there you go, guys. I have been super impressed with this. You guys saw in the first day, carry first day in pockets, how impressed I was with this. 
absolutely fell in love with this knife. D2 has held up on this, so I, I cannot tell you how much I recommend this knife. It is an awesome knife. You're not going to find much more bang for your buck on it than, than you are with this QSP Pangolin. So, guys, that's it on this one. Uh, if you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down. But please try to tell me why I can't change the content if you don't tell me what you don't like. If you want to support the channel, it's simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment. But there are some financial ways. I know you saw the Coffee Brand Coffee ad. They are a channel sponsor. They do a lot for the channel. I also have Tempered Trail. They share a coupon code, Crazy Sharp. The coffee brand one, I abs the coffee brand coffee one, I absolutely recommend you use the link. It works better. The, co the coupon code sometimes is problematic. So use my link down below. You take my link to my Amazon store. Take that link, pin it to your browser. Use it for any Amazon shopping you want to do because who wants to put on pants? You know you're going to shop on Amazon. You can do that from bed. Uh, and I have a membership. We all have fun in the membership on the Gilded server. Everyone has access to that. I do giveaways on the Gilded server for the baseline and premium tier members. And the premium tier guys have got access to a sharpening tutorial series here on YouTube behind the paywall. Guys, that's it on this one. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I'll see you in the next video.